So we sit around as journalists and we always wonder who is one of the most underrated skaters of the 1960s and 1970s. Well, this guy comes to mind because he not only maybe changed the way that players played the game, he was a strong force for Team Canada on an international level. He helped solidify Team Canada Summit 72. He solidified the return of Team Canada to the World Championships. And as a Christian athlete, he's motivated a lot of people, including Paul Henderson and a few others, to uh, seek out a higher power to understand uh, their place in life. So today we're going to talk about the legendary Ron Ellis. Now, uh, Ronald, uh, Ronald John Edward Ellis, born January 8, 1945, in the beautiful Ontario community of Lindsay, wasn't the biggest player on the ice at 5'9", 195, but his tenacity and his defense were well appreciated and respected from, uh, from Montreal to Toronto and all across the world. Now, he played a full 16 seasons in the NHL for the Toronto Maple Leafs, despite taking a few seasons off away from the game in pretty well the mid-70s. He won the Stanley Cup with Toronto in 67, and like I said, took part in the famed 72 uh, Summit Series and also was part of Team Canada's return squad in 77. Now, after playing, Ellis went into uh, numerous business ventures and later joined the staff of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Now, uh, he came out of a very strong Toronto Marlies program of the early uh, 1980s, excuse me, 1960s, where in his last season with the Marlies, he had 46 goals in 54 games and uh, 14 points in a nine-game playoff. Now, uh, now, we played on the squad to win the Memorial Cup in 64, one of the best Marley teams of all time, obviously. And Ellis became a full-time Leaf in 65 and played 11 seasons straight for 74-75 and again winning the Cup in 67. Now, uh, he retired at age 30 during training camp in 75 after coming off his most productive season of his career with 61 points. He said he no longer had the desire to play and denied that his decision had anything to do with being passed over as team captain favored Daryl Settler a month earlier. Because as we know that Toronto was doing some housekeeping with Normie Ullman and Keon, uh, you know, uh, passed on to WHA. Now, in 77, Ellis came out of retirement to play for Canada at the World Hockey Championships and uh, didn't miss a beat and then decided to resume his NHL career with the Leafs in 78. Now, uh, when Impla Punch and Black was hired to run the Leafs for the 80 season, he didn't feel Ellis was worth the money he was being paid. He offered to buy out Ellis's contract at the end of the season, but the two couldn't reach an agreement. Despite objections from the new coach Mike Nikoluk, Imlox put Ellis on waivers during the 80 season and gave him an ultimate minimum. Retire or be sent to the minor leagues. Now, the 36 year old Ellis chose to retire despite the fact he could have played for any other NHL team, but he was a pure Maple Leaf. Now, he played in 1,034 career NHL games, scoring 332 goals and 308 assists for 640 points. Now, after his life in hockey, like I said, he worked on uh, uh, for various Christian organizations to spread the word of the Lord and worked also as a teacher and in insurance. Now, for six years, he also ran his own sporting goods store. Now, in 93, he joined the Hockey Hall of Fame as the director of public affairs and assistant to the president, where he would speak on behalf of the NHL and his various uh, outreach programs with the HHOF. Now, as of uh, uh, this decade, he was still public affairs for the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Now, Ellis's, uh, the Ellis' family, including his wife, had talked a lot about how uh, the stresses of hockey on Ron took his, his toll. Now, in 86, he started a battle uh, against clinical depression, and he will later go public with a story by writing a book with Kevin Shea titled Over the Boards, The Ron Ellis Story, published in 2002, which details uh, his personal battle and how it, it's very important to diagnose and treat clinical depression before it becomes unmanageable. Uh, he also motivated uh, many of his fellow hockey players, including Paul Anderson, to seek out the, uh, the Christian side of faith 
to uh, better establish a stronger uh, relationship within uh, their, their, their hockey family and their real families. Eh? Now, on October 17, 2016, he was inducted in the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame at the Sheraton Central Hotel in Toronto, where he thanked a longtime uh, Maple Leaf manager, Jim Gregory, uh, as his mentor and coach. Now, uh, Ellis's, Ellis's respect within the NHL and the media, like myself, is very, very prominent. And he also earned an unusual tribute in 1965 when former Leaf star Ace Bailey, then working as a timekeeper at Maple Leaf Gardens, declared that he admired Ellis so much he wanted the team to give him to his retired number six to Ellis. Bailey's number had been retired following his career ending injury in, in 1993. Ellis, who has been wearing number uh, eight, changed to number six for the rest of his career, after which the number was re retired. Uh, again, awards and, uh, and achievements Stanley Cup champion in 67. Uh, NHL All-Star Game appearances, 64, 65, 68, 70, 1972 Summit Series. Now, the Team Canada uh, stats, three big assists in the 1972 Summit Series playing on Clark's line. Uh, he, he was the backbone of the grinder unit, but Team Canada 77, they almost won a medal. He had five goals and four assists. In, uh, in 10 games at uh, that very uh, big return. And he, he really, his dedication to hockey on every level uh, may lead him to the Hockey Hall of Fame one of these years. You never know. He is borderline. But you look at uh, what he's done for the Hockey Hall of Fame, for Leafs Nation, because when you say a pure Toronto Maple Leaf, Ron Ellis is that. He had the respect of his teammates, uh, the various squads in the association, the media, uh, but Ron Ellis had his own personal demons, like a lot of people have. But you understand, Memorial Cup, Stanley Cup, Summit Series, World Championships, what a career. Like, what a, what a career. And he's part of, again, that distinct uh, categories. He, uh, he has one of the longest tenures in NHL history with one team, and he's also part of a very short list of NHL players with a thousand games played, which will get shorter and shorter as years go on. Because if a player in 2020 ever plays a thousand games, where the system is now, uh, you know it's um, you know it takes takes a lot to play a thousand games. That's 12, 12 full seasons. Is not good. and most of these games, ladies and gentlemen, were consecutive. He was a very durable player. Uh, he didn't have one season from uh, 1968 to 1970, 1978 where he didn't play at least 70 or 80 games. So he was there every year. And a good playoff performer too, 18 goals in the playoffs, which for Toronto, it's uh, quite uh, quite impressive. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for listening. Please give me a comment, like, or subscribe. Uh, no, monetation, no monetization on the, uh, the on my YouTube channel. I just appreciate feedback from you, the great listeners. Have a good evening. Bye.